All right, and now the man of the hour, co-author of the Blue Square Method, Duncan McPherson. Duncan? Okay, Tyler, thank you very much. And uh, thank you to everybody for investing your time to uh, work through this presentation. I do this every year, this time of the year, but I am going to uh, go off script, call an audible, you know, uh, just based on some recent consultations I've had with some very good clients, uh, covering both timeless, but also very timely best practices in light of the era that we're in. Just so you know, hang in there for the entire presentation because what we're gonna throw the kitchen sink at you in terms of resources to capitalize on what's going on uh, in the world right now because this is where you win, to quote uh, Jim Bowen, uh, who you might know as the head of uh, First Trust Portfolios and a legend in the industry. Uh, okay, first thing I want to acknowledge is you can see, uh, you might know right now that we've, we've released our new book, The Blue Square Method. Just a quick plug on that. A lot of people ask me, what's, how is it different from the Advisor Playbook? Uh, the Advisor Playbook was, uh, we released that in 2015. So we've had seven years of interactions with some of the best teams in the world. So our clients are seven years older, seven years wiser, seven years further down their path. And we've captured their mindset and the best practices of those professionals. Uh, so if you're interested, uh, just go to the bluesquaremethod.com. You can see the table of contents, but you can also uh, download a sample chapter to get a sense for the nuances and get a feel for what we're trying to communicate there. Okay, and of course, I'm on LinkedIn, but you're probably already connected with us, so that's great. So, finish strong in 2022. So, here we are heading to Q4 of 2022. I mean, what a blur. I still remember Y2K. I mean, that was didn't seem like very long ago. And we've had pretty much about a 14-year uninterrupted bull run with a few hiccups and speed bumps along the way. But now we're in this, uh, what appears to be a pretty sustained period of volatility. And I want to make sure that serves you, doesn't hurt you. Uh, you know, the old saying, there's always a bull market somewhere. Well, that is a mindset. But as a financial professional, this is your bull market right now. And I want to talk about that and how that momentum can carry forward into next year and beyond. So let's just talk about this next uh, thought. I, I want you to go into the future with this mindset of, of embracing the opportunity to reimagine and rebrand and rejuvenate your business, your, your sense of purpose, and to reframe your relationships. Uh, this is a huge opportunity for you. Now, you are at your highest level of referability right now. Money is so incredibly topical. You think about the fear greed index. I mean, you know, on my street, most of my neighbors, they, they don't know what I do. They, they, they think I'm a financial advisor. I've tried to tell them, but I'm only mentioning this because I've been asked more in the last six months, what is going on than in the last six years? So I can only imagine what it's like for you. I want you to seize that as an opportunity. And there are adjustments you can make to find another gear uh, within your business. Now let's talk about the obvious objectives for Q4. These are timeless. You want to competitor-proof your clients and insulate them from forces out of your control. Uh, you know how it works, right? Amnesia can develop. Loyalty fatigue can develop. They get hit on by competitors. They get nudged by external forces. I want you to have this immense sense of uh, insulation, not taking anybody for granted. 
I want you to get out of evolving need, or get out in front of evolving needs and money in motion to always be achieving total client engagement and your client's full empowerment. And then lastly, capitalize on advocacy. Converting clients into referral generating advocates. And so that's what we're gonna outline here today. Now, let's go to this next slide. Let's get a little bit more granular. I'm sure you are a needs-based and goals-based financial professional. Needs-based, you know what your clients need. But you also know what your clients aspire to. And if you think about the fear, greed index, you think about the where people are when it comes to either anticipation or apprehension. When a client achieves a financial goal or when something happens in their life that is either good or maybe even not so good, I mean, chances are in the last couple of years, you've had some clients really open up to you. In terms of your bedside manner, you're probably wearing a lot of hats, right? You're a life coach, a therapist, a family dynamics manager, maybe a marriage counselor. I mean, there's all kinds of things. I don't know about you, but pretty much everybody I know, either in the first or second or at least third degree of separation, everybody has had substantial impact over the course of the last couple of years. Do you pay tribute to that? Do you celebrate the wins? And do you acknowledge what's going on in your client's life? That is the art to complement the science of being a complete financial professional. Now, with that said, let's talk about specific actionable ideas to help you finish strong in 2022. And again, have that bridge and carry forward. And just so you know, I'm gonna plant this seed now. In addition to reframing relationships and rejuvenating yourself, I also want you to know where you stand. And this is the perfect time for you and your team to go through a self-analysis of where your gaps are. You know, it's interesting, yesterday I had a consultation with a client of ours who I just adore, I've known him forever. His name's Peter. I mean, he's done a great job ensuring that it's not the Peter show. Okay, by that I mean he's depersonalized. His clients appreciate his practice and his process. He's expanded his bench of people. He, he was plateauing in terms of the type of client that he was attracting, and now he is unlocked, he's grown up market. And now he's being introduced to some very complex, sophisticated clients. But I reminded him yesterday, if you in your mind's eye think of a two circle Venn diagram, there's old Peter and new Peter. And right in between where those two circles intersect is the interlude, the space between. It's a bit of no man's land. It's a little bit unsettling, but that's what progress is. So I'm gonna give you access to a resource that's gonna help you identify your gaps, address them in a reasonable period of time, and move through that interlude to the next version of yourself. So I'll just plant that seed and come back to it in a moment. But let's talk about specific sequential steps. Number one, I'm sure you're pretty busy on the telephone both in terms of receiving phone calls and scheduling proactive calls. Now, this is timeless 101 relationship management. I'm sure you have a call rotation for the 20% of your clients who you generate 80% of your business, your most deserving client. It's scheduled, it's form-based, but you're also receiving phone calls. I want to talk about what you're saying, how you're communicating with your clients. Now, you're probably getting two types of phone calls. 
You know, your favorite clients, they call you up, not freaking out. They're not even concerned. Except they ask you this, how are you doing? Like they're so enlightened. They're so respectful. It's a two-way street. What do you say when somebody asks you how you're doing? They are giving you permission to articulate your value. You know, I talked to an advisor the other day. I asked him to keep count how many times in a day he gets asked, how are you doing? In one day, he got asked seven times. That's seven moments of permission. And I'm not saying it's opportunistic. I'm just saying it's an opportunity to, to, to convey your sense of purpose. Now, it's interesting. For many advisors, I'll say to them, I'll try to trick them. I'll say, how are you doing? You know what their knee-jerk reaction is? They'll say to me, I'm swamped. I'm busy. Working my tail off. And I, I kind of chuckle and I say, basically what you're telling me is don't even think about referring anybody to me because you're at capacity. Rather than just sort of sleepwalking through your answer when somebody says, how are you doing? I want you to seize the, uh, the, the moment and I want you to say your own version of this and lead with purpose. So if somebody says to you, how are you doing? Especially a client or a strategic partner. I want you to say to them, just sort of chuckle, pause and say, I get to tell you, it's times like these, this is why I became a financial professional. I mean, when things are going along pretty smoothly, life is good. But when things get a little rocky and a little turbulent, a little unsettled, this is the most fulfilling part of my job. And I got to tell you something, the most fulfilling part is when I meet with a friend or a family member of a client who's introduced to us. And I can tell pretty quickly they have a sense of apprehension instead of anticipation. In fact, I was talking to a friend of a client not long ago. And they were carrying a pretty heavy load. And we I just gave them the noise-canceling headphones. I just told them to focus on what matters and what they can control. And I could see their apprehension melt away. And they opened up like a flower in the sun. And it's moments like that, I love what I do. Like, I want you to be the fountain of optimism and, and fulfillment as opposed to any drain of negativity or fear or uncertainty. When somebody gives you permission, lead with purpose, lead with conviction, and plant a seed, trigger a moment of recognition about the fact that others are introducing people to you. Now, you also have some clients, and I'm sure you're very skilled at reading the room where you talk to some clients when either you reach out or they call you and you can tell there's a bit of a a bit of uncertainty a little bit of concern i'd like you to consider adopting this simple framework ecp empathy context planning Now, empathy, that is a lost art. You know, you know so much, but you got to hold back. and You're not trying to be interesting. You want to be interested in them. Let them be heard. Let them tell you specifically what they're concerned about. Be Socratic. Many issues are two or three questions deep. And then go right to form. You know as well as anybody, your, your client's goals are family, occupation, recreation, and money related. Just mirror back on them that you don't just care about them, you care about what they care about specifically. 
Talk about their aspirations around family investment legacy and dynastic planning. Talk about the fact that they want to achieve that work optional lifestyle. Talk about their bucket list. Hey, remember you told me you want to go on every single Viking River cruise on the catalog. And then connect that why to your how regarding money. Remind them, they told you. I know you've got a goal that at some point you want your money to make more money than you do. I get it. Just mirror it back on them. The more you remind them why financial independence matters, the more value they place on how you get them there. Empathy. Make it about them. You don't have to be the smartest person in the room. That, that'll come later. Empathy. Then go to context. And just simply say, hey, look, I just want to remind you. I'm a student of history. And, uh, you know, if you think of the last 120 years or so, there's been 30 episodes of substantial, severe, sustained market volatility where the market went up like an escalator and down like an elevator, 25% or more. And I just want to remind you, we're batting a thousand. So far, so good. We come out of every episode better than we went in and then go right to planning. Remind them about the difference between a financial plan, which is a blueprint for clarity and financial planning that's fluid and dynamic. And it's not about how you react, it's how you plan and prepare for. How you anticipate and you trust the plan and you stick to the process. And, you know, that old soundbite that good decisions stem from strong positions. And that's why we've got some dry powder and we're going to just assess and take advantage where possible. So just, I know you've got this, but just empathy, context planning, let that cascade down. And remember, the value and the impact of what you say to a client really begins when they hang up the phone. What lingers in their mind and in their heart after they get back on with their day? Have you given them something experiential that will resonate with them and that they can also socialize to someone else? Because I want you to capitalize on your heightened level of referability right now. Our best clients get more referrals, it's counterintuitive, but more referrals when it's turbulent than when it's calm. And it's your time to shine. Because I keep saying, calm seas never produced a skilled sailor. This is where you shine. Okay, so just, just keep that in mind. Now, I hope you've already planned and prepared to also send your clients a Thanksgiving card. I've been talking about this forever. It's still the number one biggest bang for the buck. Do what you want in uh, December. Send a holiday card or a Christmas card in December. That's fine. But it, it, it just you're swimming in a pool of sameness. There's all kinds of that. You said a Thanksgiving card might be the only card they get. You will own the mantle, especially if you send a lavish card. Highest impact, highest shelf life. And you might know already, they're good friends of mine. I spoke with Glenn this morning, the photographer. And his wife, Kathy, and her team produces these gorgeous cards. There's an old saying, right? If you're into karma and reciprocity, giving starts the receiving process. And I'm telling you, in this era that we're in right now, uh, I want you to be on the prowl. I want you to be on the lookout for opportunities to have an impact on the world. You know, words are one thing, actions are another. That old saying, be the change you want to see. There's a lot of hardship out there. 
a lot of quiet suffering. Be on the lookout for that. You know, I, I was, I'm not trying to flex here, but I was in a grocery store last week. I'm unloading my stuff out of the cart onto the belt. And I happened to notice the young man in front of me. And he's got a little pile of groceries there. And he went to pay for them. He went to tap his card. Didn't work. Pulled out another card. Didn't work. I can see his agitation escalating. Pulled out a credit card. Didn't work. Now he's embarrassed, frustrated. And I just walked over, took my card and tapped it. And I said, I got this. I just want to ease the burden just a little bit. I'm not trying to be a hero. Just the look on his face. I, I have not seen that for a long time. But unbeknownst to me, even more profound. I didn't know the third party involved, the cashier. After that young man left, I turned over to the cashier, the look on his face. Wow. And the quality of conversation we had about life, the worldview, humanity, uh, priceless. And I don't know what impact that might have on that guy. Just, just be on the lookout to just ease someone's day, just a, anything, anything. So just little actions like this can be profound. Okay, so, so check out lavish cards, look at their Thanksgiving cards, even just for the 20%. I hear so many stories. I remember being told, that a financial advisor got a massive referral from a great client. What happened was the family had a whole bunch of people over for Thanksgiving and on the table setting, they had assembled the various Thanksgiving cards they had received over the years. They kept them. And they're beautiful cards sitting on the table interspersed amongst the plates. And some, you know, apparently the wealthy brother of the client just said, what, what are all these? And they, the client said, oh, those are from our financial planner. And it, it led to this amazing conversation. And today, that is a client, the brother. I mean, you hear all these hero stories. But uh, anything you can do to amplify your brand and st strengthen your relationships in a way that has no salesmanship, but is all about stewardship, and best practices and relationship management, I'm telling you, it's going to serve you so incredibly well. Okay, now let's just talk about December. What I recommend you do is send out a holiday letter. And your holiday letter just speaks to what you're doing with your people, like what are the people on your team doing over the holidays? What are you doing with your practice? in terms of elevation of the client experience? And what are you doing with your process and how it relates to your client's evolving needs? What's going on in the world? No jargon, no technical ability, all proprietary. Nothing commoditized, everything that's related to you, your people, your practice, your process, and make it about the client and how they benefit from all of that. And then at the bottom of the letter, put in a little PS little postscript, and just simply say, P.S., by the way, at this time of year especially, I just want to thank my clients for introducing me to friends and family members throughout the year. It's a tremendous compliment and a huge responsibility and something I never take lightly. Just plant the seed. Remember, you never want to pitch the idea of a referral as a favor you're asking of someone. You want to position it and remind them that it happens, but position it as a service you provide for someone. 
Just little reminders over the year can trigger a moment of recognition that will coincide with a stage of readiness. And remember, every time you get an introduction, call up that rainmaker, say thanks, tell them how the meeting went, and then ask them this question. What did you say? How did you describe me? Because when I met your friend, they were so bought in, so predisposed. It didn't even feel like work. It was just fantastic. What did you say? And what you're trying to curate, what you're trying to engineer is a response like this. When a client internalizes your value to such a degree, they say to you back, they mirror it back on you. They say, what did I say? Well, I told my friend that if anything happened to me, the second or third call my wife makes is to you. And I told him, I've had other financial advisors over the years. I've never felt better about the path I'm on, primarily because of your process. Your process is so clear. Directionally, I just know where I'm going. And then I just talked to him about form. We just talked about his goals. Could you imagine, instead of your client saying, well, I just told my friend I trust you. I told him you're a good person and you care and you're smart and you try hard. Right? Superlatives, platitudes. You imagine if they got granular. That's engineered based on the way you articulate value and the way you demonstrate your value based on best practices. Okay, so I want to remind you of one last thing before we go to this next slide. Uh, you've probably been around the block you, and you know our stuff. Make sure at a minimum in the meetings you have with your clients over the next 90 days, you are rejuvenating them at your strategy and tactical meeting. And if you haven't already embraced this, we've got that video called the review meetings obsolete. You know, you probably said to your kids, I don't know how many times I've said to my kids, look, the windshield is so much bigger than the rearview mirror for a reason. Yes, you want to know what's behind you and what's happened, but you want to invest the past into the future. The canary in the coal mine is when your clients think that your review meetings are rehash of things that have already happened, and then they tell you, hey, it's all good, you know, whatever you think, I trust you. They don't see the merit in getting together. Strategy and tactical meetings have never been more important than right now and follow the agenda. And if you want, we'll send you our agenda. I'm telling you, no jargon. You, you'll get to the technical elements. But the first bullet on the agenda has to be how's life? How's life? Be interested. Let them tell you what's going on in their world. Second bullet, your evolving form goals. Just ask them. With everything we've been through, have your goals evolved? And then go right to form and show them and just let them, give it a placeholder. And then just let it build from there. Get into the, your assessment and your analysis, and your adjustment adjustments. And then remember that bullet. Our value-added services. In every meeting with a great client, at the end of the meeting, just remind them. Just say, hey, I just want to remind you that we have a value-added service that some of our clients really find to be a value when it's noisy out in the world. And that is, I make myself available to be a sounding board for friends and family members of my clients. And they don't need to become a client to take advantage of this. If they're important to you, they're important to us. We'll be that sounding board. And then we're led by them. We'll see where they want to take it. No expectation beyond that. I just want to let you know this is the most fulfilling thing I do when there's turbulence and uncertainty in the world. Confucius said, water dripping on a stone will eventually make a mark. Keep dripping, keep imprinting, keep reminding. Position it with stewardship, not salesmanship. Good things are going to happen. Okay, now. 
Seize the moment to pop the hood on your business over the course of the next 90 days. I'm going to give you access to the practice management index. Now, this stems from years of doing a gap analysis for very high level teams. You know, I've been saying for years, the people who like us the most need us the least. People who come to us, there's nothing wrong. There's nothing broken. But they're focused on plateau avoidance. So they want to get clear on their gaps. Well, we've created the PMI, the Practice Management Index, that will enable you to answer this sequential array of questions that will incrementally build and then culminate by printing out a report, actually two reports, that will show you where you stand in your areas of refinement and optimization. If you wanna talk about working on your business, that's what this means. The exercise in and of itself is incredibly revealing. You need to invest about 45 minutes of your time, either yourself or with your team, and then get your report, your blueprint, and then act on it before the law of diminishing intent kicks in. Very profoundly powerful. And remember, I'll just, again, because I do this like a broken record too, I, I paraphrase Hemingway, who said, uh, essentially, the goal is not to be superior to someone else. The goal is to be superior to your former self. That's what separates the best from the rest. The clay is soft. They keep working on themselves personally and professionally. So sign up for the PMI at practicemanagementindex.com. Go through the exercise. It's pretty painless. Complete the assessment. And then download your score and reporting. And then take action. And remember something, minor adjustments can in fact lead to major improvements. And I will remind you, I had a conversation with the team last week. When we met them, they were just a little bit over 400 million in AUM. Today, they're well over a billion. And I said to the lead, I said, isn't it fascinating that when you crossed over and added that comma to your AUM, Nowhere in your elevation did you all of a sudden become a better financial advisor. You were always good. What you got better at are things that are ignored or trivialized by most people in the business. And the more you outsource the commoditized and the minutia to drill down into the things that are proprietary, right? Your business your practice, your process, phenomenal things reveal themselves. So go through the practice management index. Uh, make sure you go to Lavish Cards, get those wheels in motion. Uh, I'd love to hear your story. And uh, with that, let's shift uh, to see if there are any uh, questions. Uh, from the group. Okay, can you go over ECP again? Empathy, context, planning. Empathy is let them be heard. Understanding that two or three questions deep is where re real issues uh, are, are, are living. Near back their goals and your understanding for what their aspirations are. Let them tell you what's keeping them up at night. Just be that voice of reason, the noise-canceling headphones, and the fountain of optimism. And then go to context. Talk about the history. And by the way, I wrote a uh, white uh, sort of a, an executive summary on a book called A Short History of Financial Euphoria by John Kenneth Galbraith. Uh, it's like only a couple pages long, but it just it's a reminder of human nature, the madness of crowds. And uh yeah, so if you want that, just ask for it. But empathy, context, and then planning. Planning speaks to your preparation. Yes, you create a financial plan, 
but your planning process is fluid and dynamic. Good decisions stem from strong position. What was the holiday letter scripting again? Okay, so remember, people practice process, and then the PS, PS, by the way, now would be a very good time for me to thank my clients for introducing their friends and family members to me throughout the year. It's a tremendous compliment and a huge responsibility and something I never take lightly. So the premise there is you're not asking for a referral, you're just reminding that it happens. Does your phrasing change at all whether the markets are favorable or not? Well, you have to acknowledge the reality of what we're going through. Uh, but, you know, the, the typical charts, I mean, you take in the long view. Um, so, yeah, it would, it would modify uh, slightly. But you, you, your philosophy, your planning strategy, and your process does not deviate. Because it's not the wind, it's the set of the sail. How you set the sail is adjusted to take advantage favorably, but you're not overreact. You know, you know what I'm saying there, okay? Uh, speaking of critical life events, I had a client receive a substantial promotion to head of engineering at his company. How would you recommend acknowledging this? Uh, that's actually fascinating. And I'll tell you, on a personal note, uh, my youngest son, is in uh, university uh, in Europe studying engineering. And we've had some phenomenal conversations because uh, he's, he's in civil engineering. You know the ring that engineers wear on their little finger? Uh, that is a symbol to pay tribute to a bridge that was built in Quebec that collapsed. It was poorly engineered and designed and, and uh, built. And it, it speaks to the responsibility engineers have to humanity. So I would recommend uh, a card, like Lavish Cards has some books on bridges, like or, or, uh, cards with bridges. Use that as the link that, you know, congratulate him. Uh, make the connection that you are the bridge to his financial goals and uh, aspirations. And if there's a great book, out there, I'm sure there is on beautiful bridges around the world. Uh, that might have something that might have an impact on him. Anything related to form, anything he's told you about fish and recreation or money, anything that you send as a gift, uh, along with a good card, would be a great idea. Uh, can you please provide the how am I doing response script? Is it available on your website? Well, you'll get this recording, so it's in there. Um, but again, just just go to purpose. Like, how are you doing? Uh, you know what? I got to tell you something right now. How am I doing? Uh, it's times like this. This is why I became a financial advisor. Uh, I love what I do. Uh, helping people just make sense of this, tune out the noise, focus on what they can control, look to the future with anticipation. And I especially like when I speak to a friend or a family member of a client who's carrying a heavy load of, of uncertainty. And I just have a conversation. I'd be a sounding board. And I love what I do. So it just goes like that. Never like, oh, I'm busy. I'm swamped. I'm at capacity. Don't bother referring anybody to me. I, I'm too busy. You know, none of that, right? Yeah, I love that. Man plans, God laughs. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's great. Uh, yes, there is a replay available. We'll send you the recording if you got here late, because I, I, we covered some very basic, but uh, very timely and timeless uh, content. So uh, with that, I'll just say thank you very much for investing your time. It's obviously your most valuable commodity. Your clients are your most valuable asset within your enterprise. So throw everything at them proactively uh, with good intentions and uh, with a good process in place and uh, amplify your sense of purpose. Be on the prowl looking for opportunities to ease the burden of anybody without any expectation of fanfare, 
uh, reciprocity or payback. It's just these are the actions the world needs. And as a cumulative, if more and more people take this action, I think the energy, if you follow the Schumann resonance and the energy and the pulse of planet Earth, uh, it takes all of us to amp that up. So that's our responsibility. So uh, I'll just say thank you very much. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to chime in on LinkedIn. We'll do a follow-up and get you all these resources, the PMI, some video templates and tools, um, and a replay if you liked any of the scripting to share with your team. And uh, aside from that, check out the Blue Square Method uh, at thebluesquaremethod.com and kick those tires. And uh, otherwise, I hope we cross paths sometime in the future. But uh, I'll just say thank you very much. Finish strong. And uh, in the meantime, make it a great day. Okay, bye for now.